A San Diego pilot is back home tonight after traveling 26,000 miles in the name of peace, breaking multiple aviation records along the way. Robert De Laurentiis flew from two different places in the world. Keep in mind, these are the only two places that have never been at war. Of course, I'm talking about the North and South Pole. His journey took him to six continents and 22 countries, all in the name of peace. And now his journey is going to be chronicled in the upcoming documentary, Peace Pilot, To the Ends of the Earth and Beyond. Now, of course, along this way, he encountered a slew of mechanical issues during the adventure, while also facing something else that shook the world, the coronavirus. Yeah, maybe you've heard of it. But you know what? It didn't stop him from fulfilling his mission. And the Zen pilot himself is joining us now to discuss. Robert, so great to see you. Congratulations. Hi, Ginger. Great to be back on the show. Thanks for welcoming me back. Yeah, you know what? The last time we spoke, it was in April. At that time, you were being quarantined in Spain. So what you been up to since then? <laughs> Mostly trying to get out of Spain. But, um, you know, with the help of many people, including the U.S. Embassy and uh, some supporters, both in Sweden and Spain, uh, the local police, customs, immigration, airport manager, I was able to get out of there. And in part, the reason was because our plastic particle experiment was able to test for the coronavirus on plastics in the atmosphere. So it was critical that I leave at the height of the pandemic. And then I flew over to Sweden uh, for about uh, three, four weeks to prepare for that North Pole crossing. Okay, so if somebody uh, missed our special when we spoke back in April, it is on our website, but if they missed that portion, give us an overview of what you set out to accomplish with this mission, this mission of peace. Well, you know, we set some world records. We were carrying an experiment for NASA, a wafer scale spaceship. I told you about the plastic uh, particle experiment for Scripps, and we were burning um, biofuels over the North and South Poles, but most importantly, this was a mission of peace. So we connected the South and the North Poles, the places on the planet where peace has always existed, and hopefully everybody in between. And, you know, at a time when the world is polarized, the goal was to connect the polarities and sort of zero point them. And it doesn't really matter, you know, um, that the, the world is disconnected because when things get difficult, then we go back to our fundamentals. And that was very true when I was flying as well, right? When things get tough, you aviate, navigate, and communicate. And for us as humans, you know, realizing that there are more similarities than differences amongst us was the important part, that we all have a desire for family, for peace, for safety, security. And, you know, we interviewed many people along the way. And what we found was that it didn't matter if you were a dog sled mesh, a musher in um, uh, Patagonia or if you were a Zulu ranger in Africa or the grandson of Charles Lindbergh, everybody wanted the same things. And once again, it was family, you know, love, safety, security. I absolutely love the juxtaposition that you just painted for us as far as your travels around the world from pole to pole and the trials of life going on right now for everybody, not just Americans, but the entire world. What else did you learn from this journey? Well, you know, we learned that uh, slowing down was an important thing, and the coronavirus has forced us to do that. The citizen of the world, the plane that I flew from pole to pole, flies at about 340 miles an hour. And when I got to Spain, I was on a bullet train that did about 150. My rental car did 70. And then it, the coronavirus stopped me in my tracks. Mm. So it forced, you know, reflection. Um, it forced a position of gratitude because you were thankful for everything that you had, whether it be the food in your refrigerator, your toilet paper. Um, it forced me at least to connect with nature because I was in a place where I could look out over the ocean and it forces you to really redefine yourself because you're no longer identified by your job, your car, your house, your clothes. It was really about, you know, helping other people, maybe, um, you know, having a better connection with a family member, helping your neighbor, um, supporting somebody through difficult times. I just love your spirit. I love how you look at life and relate it to so many people. Our viewers have been able to look at footage as you've been talking, uh, the plane that you were in, but, and I know you were by yourself, even though you had a big team of support, you actually did this mission flying it by yourself. But I also know you flew with a Tiger Squadron. Talk to me about that. Right, the Tiger Squadron. Um, there was a total of five Nanchings, 
their uh, aerobatic planes and we had a photo ship as well. And they escorted me back towards San Diego. And it was such a wonderful way to come home. Uh, you know, some of those guys are my good friends and sponsors and uh, visually it was pretty spectacular, but you know, metaphorically it showed that we can all cooperate and create something beautiful. And, you know, even during these difficult times, we can continue on and pull off some amazing things. So what's next for you, Robert? Because I have a feeling you're not just going to, you know, sit still. <laughs> There's no way. Yeah, I'm getting that question a lot. Um, I'm going to finish off my fourth book called Peace Pilot to the Ends of the Earth and Beyond. We've submitted seven of the 10 episodes for the docuseries by that same name to Discovery Channel. We're hoping they're going to pick that up. I'm going to be writing five simulations for a Redbird flight simulator so that anybody with a Redbird simulator can experience what it's like to fly over the South or North Poles or beat a uh, cyclone out of Madagascar. And, um, you know, just sort of reflect on the lessons I've learned when you're flying along, you're concentrating on that leg, you know, staying safe, staying alive. And when you get back and there's been 22 to 23 countries, you know, you visited, um, it takes time to really put it all together. Yeah, for sure. I know this was a uh, harrowing adventure on so many levels, including adding in the pandemic. So, Robert, I truly appreciate your time, and I really appreciate uh, the message that you are bringing around the world. So keep us posted, if you would, my friend, okay? All right. Thanks, Ginger. Thanks for your interest. You got it. Take care. Well,